How's it going everyone? This is Mind Blank. Welcome back to my channel where a few days ago I was browsing some used PC parts trading websites and I found a rather high occurrence of what to me seems, at least on the surface, a mismatch of parts. Intel i5 lock CPUs paired with Z boards and the reverse, 7600Ks or 6600Ks paired with H or B boards. Now I'm not here to judge anyone on their purchasing decision, but it turns out that at least one of these decisions makes more sense than the other. And here's where Ryzen comes in again. I thought to myself, why would anyone pair a non-K CPU with an overclocking ready motherboard? The answer is simple and stood there all along. Fast memory support. So I checked this on 6 ads for people that are selling kits comprised of CPU, Z motherboard and RAM, 4 of them were selling DDR4-2666 or above with an average just shy of 3000. How's that got to do anything with Ryzen, you might ask? Well, it does, a whole bunch, since the B350 boards all allow for both CPU and RAM overclocking up to a max of 3200. Right now, Intel locks both CPU and RAM overclocks on any non-Z board. It was at that moment I realized that my Ryzen 5 review doesn't quite paint a correct picture. Let's take the i5-7600, a $229 locked CPU, which I personally could pair with 3200 RAM in a test if I wished, but are budget conscientious buyers doing this? I mean, think about it, if they're not willing to spend the extra $20 to the unlocked K for at least higher stock speeds if not overclocking, they're not willing to spend double that or more to go for a Z board to have fast RAM support. Now, Intel H and B boards from the One X Zero series are stuck with 2133 MHz RAM, while the new 2X Zero chipsets allow for 2400 RAM support. It's pretty clear that Intel allowed the increase in RAM speed to differentiate, with slightly higher performance, its Cable Lake CPUs from the Skylake ones, which are clocked identically, meaning the locked SKUs. Cable Lake is practically 0% IPC increase from Skylake, remember. Providing memory overclocks on locked CPUs is where this would matter the most, since that's where you're most likely to hit CPU limits and where fast RAM can improve things. Meanwhile, you're free to go for 3200MHz RAM on a B350 AM4 board and pair it with what I consider the absolute best price-to-performance CPU out on the market right now, the 1600 Ryzen 5 Non-X. So me testing the i5-7500 with 3200 RAM in the Ryzen 5 review is a flaw and not indicative of real-world performance or what you'd be able to pull off unless you go for a more expensive Z board on a pretty budget i5 system build. Same for the 7600 and 7600K paired with an H or B chipset with the added bonus air quotes that you're also completely overclock blocked on that particular last combo. I guess you can see where this is going. Platform costs affect real-world performance in a true-to-life fixed-budget scenario and this point is valid all the way through the Ryzen 7 lineup inclusive. Cause there's nothing stopping you from getting a 1700 with a decent B350 board while there are locked i7s out there that people pair with H or B boards. As for RAM prices, well, it's not like only the higher frequency ones got much more expensive in the past months. All of it is expensive and the move from 2400 to 3000 commands around 5 to 10 dollars in price difference, if at all depending on offers. And we're talking about definite performance increases with faster RAM. For anyone doubting that RAM also has a big impact on Intel CPUs, well here's the proof. The fact of the matter is that CPUs running game logic and issuing draw calls for the GPU will benefit from both bandwidth and lower latency. So even if you go from something like 2400CL14 to 3000CL18, a very very forced example as you'll not even find CL18-3000 RAM on the market, while true latency is nearly identical, you do get much higher bandwidth with the 3000MHz RAM and that matters. Don't trust me? Well here's the benchmarks on this exact example. Let's do an exercise together. You go out with the idea of spending $220 max on a CPU. If you go Intel, that's the i5-7600 and if you go AMD, it's the Ryzen 1600. Next, let's plan for getting some nice performance out of these CPUs with 3000MHz RAM. So that's $110 for this Team Group Vulcan, which actually has some nice latencies, CL16. 
And if you're wondering, this is a grand total of $10 more than the cheapest 2400MHz CL16, which is actually on offer right now. Now, let's grab a motherboard for these. We're going to get Micro ATX since that's where you'll find the cheapest boards on both platforms. Let's say we're building a compact system. The least expensive Z70 MATX is $105, while definitely not the cheapest B350 board is $80. You can get an H270 board for the same money, but forget about fast RAM on a Loctite 5 where it counts the most to be able to have that fast RAM. If you're somehow doubting the VRM on the B350 board, I'd say with confidence that you 100% should not and it's going to be more than fine for a Ryzen 5. These few dollars here add up, crash your budget and you have to spend more or limit yourself and choose components based on the cash you actually have. And on top of this whole situation, your Intel is stuck on base frequency while you can overclock the 1600 to 3.7 GHz even on the stock cooler like I did. Notice I'm not even entering the whole 2 more cores and 8 more threads the 1600 comes with part. Also this whole thing is US dollar based so don't forget that in other countries Z boards are quite a bit more expensive. And there's also the fact that AM4 boards still have the early adopter tax attached to them and you'll see lower prices and better offers in the coming months. That's why I think that the most plausible scenario for Loctite 5 and even Loctite 7 testing is with 2400MHz RAM at best since you're much more likely to go with an H board instead of a more expensive Z board. Heck, this can even be extended somewhat to the 7600K since I've seen quite a few people selling a 7600K and an H270 or B250 board combo. That's forever stock CPU and 2400MHz RAM at best which is double bad. Poor 7600K being tortured. Getting a 7600 with a Z70 board kinda defeats the purpose of you choosing the slightly less expensive Loctite 5 instead of the $20 more case Q only to spend probably double that on a Z70 board. Might as well get the K so that's another $20 and you're gonna need a decent cooler so add another $40 or thereabouts and next thing you know you're running a GTX 1050 Ti when you could've run the GTX 1060 you initially wanted on a Ryzen 5 system not optimal. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash people's choices and if you want to get an i5 by all means, it's still a good chip for today's games. But remember, the only bias you must have in choosing PC parts is towards your wallet. Always try and pick the quality and high price to performance ratio parts out there. If you're running massive amounts of cash for your extravagant build, then yeah, this doesn't apply obviously. AMD needs to concentrate on getting better memory support on their AM4 boards for RAM that's running Hynix and Micron dies. Samsung is pretty much covered at this point, but these sticks usually are a bit pricier and are not that frequently found on 3000MHz RAM or slower. This is the key to this platform and benchmarking Loctite 5 SKUs needs to be done with 2400MHz RAM maximum. There's no doubt that there's people running Z chipsets on locked CPUs, I just mentioned that at the start of the video, but that's the result of having no options up until a few months ago. Anyway, this is now over and we are actually waiting on Intel's response which should shake things up a bit. A good thing since we'll have more options in the same budget. Anyway, thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing, don't forget to check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description down below. See you next time everybody, bye bye.